learn concepts in a meaningful project that they make a deeper connection with the ideas and they're willing to dive deeper to learn more about those ideas. So actually we were having a discussion this morning with a variety of teachers and researchers and we were talking about well, which is more important for children to learn core ideas like variables or other mathematical and scientific ideas or for them to be creative thinkers. And I think that's a false dichotomy. We can do both. Both of them are important. And I think that the best way to learn the core ideas is if you do it as part of a project that's meaningful to you. Because we've seen over and over for many children that they'll make a deeper connection with those ideas and continue to dive deeper if they could use the ideas like a variable in a project that they really care about. So we see again that the four P's were at work. He learned about this while working on a project, not just by solving a problem given in algebra class, but by working on a pro project. It was something he was passionate about. He loved this game. It was with peers. In this case, he was getting an idea from me that we were working together to, to expand it. And he was doing it in a playful spirit where he was experimenting and trying new things as he worked on this project. Now, these are just a couple examples from Ipsy sharing her artwork and the boy at the clubhouse learning about variables. We see these types of examples over and over in the Scratch community. Uh, so we're so excited to see that Scratch is spreading around the world and that so many people are using it. As Natalia explained in the beginning, it's been growing and growing. So last year, more than 8 million new children officially joined the online community. And many other children used it without joining the online community. So there are lots of big numbers. Actually, last year, more than 200 million people around the world had some interaction with Scratch. So some of them must, might have just looked at the website. They didn't create projects. But tens of millions of kids did create projects. And we're very happy that in every country in the world is using Scratch. It's been translated to more than 70 languages. Although I did find out on my visit here, although Scratch is being is translated to Russian, and that's how I saw it used in schools here in, Bel in Belarus. It has been translated yet in Belarusian, so that's now one of our goals is to make sure that for the next version of Scratch, we'll make sure there's also a Belarusian translation. Uh, so that's one of the, the, uh, the, uh, one of the commitments I have after my visit to, to, to Belarus. Also, we're very happy that it's very even gender distribution. Oftentimes, if you just have a, a coding club after school and you say, who wants to come join a programming club? More boys will come than girls. But sometimes, but here, we have seen with Scratch, partly since you can use it in so many different ways, it's been appealing to children from all different backgrounds and all different interests and all genders. And that's very important to us because we see Scratch as not just a tool for training the next generation of professional programmers, although we hope it contributes to that, we want Scratch to be a tool for everyone from all backgrounds. The same way that writing is for everyone. We don't teach writing only for people who are going to grow up and become professional journalists or professional writers. Of course, they make writing as part of their work. But for us, we want everyone to become a writer. Because even if you're not a professional writer, it's important to have writing to be able to write your own diary, to write a note to your friend, to make a shopping list. Writing has many different uses. So again, we want programming to have that same feeling, to be a literacy. It's not just for professionals, although there's a very good professional path with that, but it's for everyone to be able to share ideas and express their ideas. Now, as Scratch has grown, it's been changing the places where Scratch is used. When we launched Scratch a little over 10 years ago, actually it's 11 years ago now, it was used mostly in homes at first, and then in community centers and libraries. At first it was not used in schools very much, partly because many schools are somewhat slower to adopt new, new things. Also, we didn't develop any materials to help teachers know how to use Scratch. But over time, we developed more materials. One of my students, Karen Brennan, made a whole website for educators and did a curriculum guide for educators, and many other people started creating lesson plans and curriculum guides for, 